I'm Archdeacon Rod Bauer and I welcome you to evening prayer for Saturday. The psalm will be Psalm 78 and the reading is from Colossians chapter 2. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He will make me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely your goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The day is now past, and the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Psalm 78. Give heed to my teaching, O my people, and incline your ears to the words of my mouth. For I will open my mouth in a parable and expound the mysteries of former times, what we have heard and know, what our forebears have told us. We will not hide from their children, but declare to the generations yet to come the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, his mighty and wonderful works. He established a law in Jacob and made a decree in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children, that future generations might know, and those yet unborn, that they in turn might teach to their children, so that they might put their confidence in God and not forget his works, but keep his commandments and not be as their forebears, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set their heart aright, whose spirit was not faithful to God. The children of Ephraim armed with a bow Turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant. They refused to walk in his law. They forgot what he had done and the wonders he had shown them. For he did marvellous things in the sight of their ancestors and in the land of Egypt, in the country of Zion. He divided the sea and let them pass through He made the waters stand up in a heap. In a daytime, he led them in a cloud. And all night long with the light of fire, he cleft the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink in abundance as from springs of water. He brought streams out of the rock and caused the waters to flow down like rivers. Lord Christ, eternal word and light of the Father's glory, send your light and your truth that we may both know and proclaim your word of life to the glory of God the Father, for you now live and reign, God, for all eternity. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Colossians, chapter 2 beginning at the 16th verse.
Therefore, do not anyone let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink, or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the universe, why do you live as if you still belong to the world? Why do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. All these regulations refer to things that perish with use. They are simply human commandments and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-imposed piety, humility and severe treatment of the body, but they are of no value in checking self-indulgence. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For since by one man came death, by another has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Generous God, whose hand is open to fill all living things with plenteousness, Make us ever thankful for your goodness. Grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal One, we give... You thanks for the beauty and abundance of the creation that sustains our living. We give you thanks for those with whom we work and learn and live and pray and play. But above all, we give you thanks for Jesus the Christ, for his life and teaching that guide us on our way, for his dying and rising again that make us one with you. And so we pray for all you have called us to minister with. For Peter, our bishop, and for Sonia and Charlie, our assistant bishops. Grant them wisdom and courage and perseverance in their ministries. We pray for all who prepare to lead worship this weekend whether in person or on various platforms of media. 
Inspire their words that they may touch the hearts of many and draw many souls to you. We pray for Scott, our Prime Minister. We pray for the National Cabinet and for the people of Victoria as numbers begin to grow. We pray that as we begin to tread the path out of lockdown, you may grant people wise hearts to discern what is safe and what is unsafe, that you may protect the vulnerable and guide the unwise. We join with the First Nations peoples as we pray for a deep sense of reconciliation. And we pray for the forthcoming Glasgow Climate Conference for all leaders who will attend. Grant them a clear vision of a sustainable future. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Come to visit us, Lord, this night, so that by your strength we may rise at daybreak to rejoice in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen.